All right, so now we're going to move on to the next section, and that's section 3D. And we're going to first talk about distribution and what that is and how we can distribute. And then we're going to solve some more multi-step equations, but this time we're going to be focusing on distribution. So at the end of this video, our learning objectives and what you should know is first you'll know what distribution is, you'll know how to distribute, and then you'll know how to solve multi-step equations that involve distribution. And we're actually going to go through a couple ways on how you can solve a problem that is set up through distribution. You're always going to hear me, or I'm always going to tell you to do it one way, just because this way will always work, but I'll show you different methods and you ultimately choose which one works best for you. The distributive property of multiplication states that when a number is multiplied by the sum of two numbers, the first number or the number that we're multiplying can be multiplied to both of those numbers separately and then add it after we multiply. So let me just show you an example of this real quick. So if I say three times the sum of two plus four, well, there's a few ways that we can do this. We can follow our order of operations and PEMDAS and add this first and say, well, we can then do three times six, which is gonna give me 18. Or what we can do is what we're learning now is, distrib is the, our distributive property of multiplication. Remember, we're learning that parentheses mean multiply. When I wrote three parentheses two, that's telling me that we're multiplying three times two. So when I write three parentheses two plus four, it means that we're multiplying the three with the two plus four. So rather than adding first, what we can do is we can also distribute or multiply both of these numbers individually. So I can then do three times two. And since this is a positive four and a positive three, it becomes plus three times four, which is then going to give me six plus 12, which is 18. So you see, no matter which way we do it, if we were to add first and then multiply or multiply, then add, we still get the same number. Now, when we're doing this with number numerical values it doesn't matter which way we do because we can add or multiply first however what we're going to start learning now is when it's three times x plus two and since these aren't like terms we can't add them first so we can't actually combine them and then uh, multiply what we would have to do now is we must multiply first so we can then do three times x or three times two and remember, when there's no number in front of this X, it's understood to be one. And when we're multiplying, we multiply our coefficient with the, the, the constant three. So it becomes three times one, which is three or three X and three times two, which is then six. So this three times X plus two is actually three X plus six. So that is our distributive property. We're first gonna go through this a few more examples of multiplying together. And then we're gonna show you how we can use this to solve some equations. All right, so before we go through another example of distributive property, let's just talk about multiplying to make sure you guys understand that. So when we're adding, so if we're doing 2x plus 3x, when we're adding our like terms, we add our coefficients. So we would then do 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5. So since these are like terms, 2x plus 3x is equal to 5x. So when we're adding, we just add the numbers, uh, our coefficients and the numbers that we have. When we're multiplying, if I do 6 times 4x, well, when we multiply, we multiply our six and our coefficient. So we're multiplying this together. And the reason why this works is remember, multiplication is the same as repeated addition. So six times four X is the same as saying four X plus four X plus four X plus four X plus four X six times. But we don't want to write that out every single time. And since we're adding this together six times, we can also say, well, since I know I'm adding six fours, I can say it's six times four, which is 24. So this means I'm gonna have 24 X's. So when we're multiplying, we can just simply multiply our numbers together. And six times four gives me 24. And since they're both positive, it is then positive 24 X. So when we're multiplying, we just multiply our numbers just like we added our numbers when we are adding. All right, so now let's go ahead and do some distributive property examples. We're gonna do two of them, and then we'll move on to solving. All right, so when we are distributing, we just need to make sure we're multiplying everything by that number. And that's where we make a lot of mistakes or students makes a lot of, make a lot of mistakes is they'll only multiply the first number and not both numbers with it. So when we are multiplying, we need to make sure that we're distributing this four into both. So we do four times five X. So I'm gonna write this out separately. So four times five X and then four times five is going to give me 20. So it's a positive 20 X. And then I'm going to distribute it into the next one. And it's four times negative two, which is negative eight. So it's going to be minus eight. 
So now four times five X minus two is the same as 20 X minus eight. We just need to make sure that we're distributing it in and we just multiply our numbers. And when we have two constants multiply, whatever the sign is at the end. So since it's minus eight, that's telling us it's subtract. If it was a positive eight, we would be adding. So if the signs remain positive, we're adding that number. If their signs turn to negative, we are subtracting that number. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so here we have eight parentheses, three minus nine X. So remember parentheses means multiply. And since we have two terms in there, the three and the minus nine X, uh, we need to make sure we're distributing. So everything needs to be multiplied by the eight. So eight times three is gonna give me 24. So it's a positive 24. And here when we do eight times negative nine X, we're doing eight times negative nine, which is then gonna be negative 72. So it's negative 72 X. And since it was a negative number, that means we're subtracting it. So it's minus 72 X. And that will be our final answer for eight times three minus nine X. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do some examples of solving equations and they're gonna have distribution in it. I'm gonna show you two ways that we can solve um, and it's up to you which way you wanna choose. It's ultimately your call, um, but I'm going to have you lean towards one way until we get a little bit more comfortable with solving equations because that way will work every single time. And if it gives us a fraction as our answer, we don't have to worry about that fraction until the very end. But if, if, if uh, in some examples, if you try to get rid of your distribution first by division, um, then you might have fractions earlier in your problem, which might make it a little bit harder for you to solve. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple examples now. All right, so here's our first example of two times X minus eight is equal to 24. Now, remember, we have multiple things going on here. So when we're solving this, we're actually going to be doing our PEMDAS in reverse. And now let's see, what is it that we have? Well, when we have this two with parentheses, that means that we're multiplying. So I know I'm gonna be multiplying. And then I see the parentheses on the inside. So when I'm solving in the reverse way, as I told you before, we get rid of what we did last first. So since there's no addition, so now the, the subtraction I see is inside that parentheses. So I wouldn't actually deal with that subtraction until after I get to my parentheses, if I'm gonna do it this way first. So that means the first thing I have is my multiplication and the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So if you're going to do this way, the one thing I would suggest is make sure that the number that we have here, two and 24 are actually divisible. If two does not go into 24, like I'll show you in our next example, we wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest you do this first and wait till the end. So if I'm gonna get rid of my multiplication, I can divide both sides by two. They then get rid of each other, they cancel out because it's one, and now I'm left with X minus eight is equal to 12. And now I'm done my multiplication and I go to my parentheses. So once I get inside my parentheses, I actually have to start this PEMDAS all over again because now I need to figure out, well, what's inside my parentheses. So as I look here, the only thing I have inside my parentheses is subtraction and the inverse of subtraction is addition. So that means I'm gonna add eight to both sides and then I get minus eight plus eight is zero. So X is then equal to 12 plus eight, which is 20. So our final answer is 20. When you're doing it this way, one of the things of the benefits is we're going to make our numbers as small as possible. Um, and by doing that, uh, it makes, might be a little bit easier for us to do our mental math, right? But the other thing that we can do is you're always going to hear me. The very first thing that I look for you to do when you're solving equations is to simplify. And what that means is you will combine all of your like terms that you can, or you will multiply if you can or divide, but uh, it's usually just multiplication. So those are things I say, get done first, simplify everything you can do, multiply, combine like terms, do everything that you can, and then we'll get started with our PEMDAS. And the reason why I suggest this is because you see, when we have these parentheses, people will try to add the eight out of that parentheses first and because they see the subtraction. So instead of doing that and getting caught up with what's in parentheses and what's not, I just suggest you get rid of all of your parentheses and do all the computation that you can first. So simplify first. So that means that we will actually distribute this two in. And two times X is going to give me two X because this is a one that's understood to be in front of there. So it becomes two X. And then two times negative eight is going to give me negative 16. So it's two X minus 16 is equal to 24. And then from here, we are going to add, uh, so now after I simplify, I'm sorry, after I simplify, I'm then going to look at my PEMDAS. Now there's no other parentheses I have. So whatever is appearing, I'm gonna get rid of first. So I see I had the subtraction and then I had the multiplying. So now I don't need to worry about my parentheses and if I'm doing something too soon. So when I'm going into my reverse order, 
I just need to make sure I'm getting rid of my subtraction first and the inverse of subtraction is addition. So I will add 16 to both sides. This will cancel out and give me zero. So 2x is equal to, well, 24 plus 16 is 40. And then from here, I got rid of my subtraction. There's no addition or division. My multiplying, my inverse is division. So since I'm being multiplied by two, I'll divide each side by two. And that is then going to give me that X is equal to 20. So you see, no matter which way we do it, we get the same answer. The difference is we're dividing 24 divided by two instead of 40 divided by two. So it's a little smaller number. And then we're doing 12 plus eight instead of 24 plus 16. So when we're able to divide first, then it will just give you smaller and maybe easier numbers to work with. However, not every single time is it going to work out like that. So I'm going to do another example with you where the numbers aren't divisible. And that's why it might be a little bit better to always simplify first. And also if we're always simplifying every single time, if that's our first thought process when we get into any problem, it might be a little bit easier for us than when we are solving uh, later on uh, because it's the same steps we're doing. So we're, we're kind of just memorizing the same thought process and logic to solve instead of jumping back and forth between different types of problems. Once you get a little bit better of a hang of it, then maybe I would suggest that you start to logically think and critically think about what might be more effective or faster. Um, but until then, maybe we just follow these steps of always simplifying first, and that means combining any like terms or multiplying. All right, let's move into our next example. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next example. And this one is what I was talking about. I see that I'm multiplying by 3, and what it's equal to is 20. So if I try to get rid of that multipli multiplication first, I'm going to be dealing them with this fraction of 20 over 3, which I'm going to have to be doing multiplication, division, adding, subtracting with it. So sometimes it might not work out for us to divide. So that's why I always suggest the first thing that you do is simplify. And our next example, which is going to be our last one, you're going to see even more as to why if we try to get rid of that um, distribution first by division, that it's going to be even harder for us at times. So I'm always just going to suggest that you simplify first. And what that means, again, remember, is that we are going to combine any like terms that we can. And we're going to do any multiplication. That's usually the two things that we will be doing when we are simplifying. All right. So I see it's three times 2x minus 4. So I'm going to distribute. Well, 3 times 2 gives me 6. So this then gives me, whoops, not 2x. Uh, this then gives me. 6x. And then I'm going to distribute the 3 into the negative 4. And 3 times negative 4 is minus 12. So it's minus 12 is equal to 20. And now I'm going to look and say, all right, well, let me go ahead and see what I need to get rid of first. So remember, we're doing our PEMDAS, but now we're doing it in reverse. So I see that I have subtraction and I see I have multiplication. So now to get rid of subtraction, I know it's going to be addition. So I'm going to add my 12 first to both sides because I need to get rid of what I did last. So 6x is then equal to 32. So now I can cross out the subtraction. There's no addition or division. So my next thing I'm going to be doing is getting rid of my multiplication. And we get rid of multiply through divide. So I divide each side by 6. So x is then equal to 32 over 6. So you see, by waiting until the end, we then don't have to worry about our fractions to the very end of it. And we do still need to reduce. Both of these are divisible by two. So I can then say that X is equal to 16 over three. Now you can write your answer as an improper fraction. You can write it as uh, a mixed number or you can write it as a decimal uh, if you really wanted to. Uh, I highly suggest that you leave everything as an improper fraction going forward because that's usually what we will be using when we're doing any kind of calculations as we get into higher level maths, we usually don't leave it in mixed numbers. So I would suggest just leave it in a ha get in the habit of leaving it as an improper fraction. All right, so there's one more example we're going to go through, and that is if. All right, so this is the last example that we're going to go through. Um, and when we see this here, um, if I see I have multiple parentheses, so that means multiple distributions. So if we were to try and divide this, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So that's why I always suggest that we just look to simplify first, right? And with our simplification, we will have combining like terms that we're looking for and multiply. And it doesn't need to happen in this order. Maybe we multiply first. Maybe we combine like terms first. It's just whatever or however the problem is presented to us. Well, these mean multiply. So we're going to go ahead and multiply. So we have 3 times 2, which gives me 6. So we have 6x. And 3 times minus 8, so 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, so it's minus 24. And then we're going to attribute the 2 into this other parentheses. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8, so it's plus 8x because it's positive. 
and two times two, which is going to give me a positive four. So it's plus four is then equal to eight. And now that we multiplied everything, there's no more multiplication, but we do have like terms that we can combine. We have six X and eight X and we have minus 24 and plus four. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, six X plus eight X, well, six plus eight gives me 14, so it's positive. So it's positive 14 X. And then I have minus 24 plus four is equal to negative 20. So it's minus 20 and that is still equal to eight. Now there's nothing else that we can simplify. There's no other work that we can do here to, to uh, simplify our problem. So now we're just gonna go ahead and solve by using our PEMDAS in reverse again. And we're gonna see, okay, what is it that we're doing? Well, we're multiplying and subtracting again. So to get rid of our subtraction, we know we're going to add. So since it's minus 20, I'm gonna add 20 to both sides. And that gives me 14X is then equal to 28. So I got rid of my subtraction. There's no addition or division. Well, the inverse of multiplying is divide. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 14. And that means X is then equal to two. So that is my final answer. X is equal to two. And if we wanted to check our work, we could plug it back in. All right, so that is it for this video.